Welcome to Vintage. My name is Rokas. I know you missed me last week, but I'm here this week. You have to be fashionably late, as I do. Anyhow, this year, Inside Vintage, we're dealing with Calypso. We're dealing with the inside, the outside, the backside. Well, the backstage and behind the scenes of Calypso. You know what I'm talking about. Welcome, Vintage 2015. One of the stalwarts in the music industry and the entertainment industry for surely for over 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lennox Tuesday. In terms of stage management, you, you didn't have any sort of formal training not, or anything not really. like that? No, not really. You just fall in and do what you needed to do. And by the grace of God, did it well. Nice. <laughs> so then, tell me, how did you link up with, um, with Frank and, and Claude Martino of Spectacular Promotions? Um, one of the, the lieutenants, one of Claude's main men, was, was absent for a show at the Savannah. Mm -hmm. And Claude asked me to fill in there, right, to supervise the front gate to see what's happening and things. And um, I happened to do that show with them. And then we went on to another show. And then Claude decided that he was going to come in the Calypso business when William Monroe decided that after Kingdom of the Wizards, he had enough. So you were at Kingdom of the Wizards? I spent, that was my real learning period. Okay. Um, working with the mighty composer, who is one of the best people I know backstage there. Send decent names to pacify heat, like corporals go cool. Coleman, fairly, these names will make him come peacefully. Instead of that, you're sending Rowley. And before it was so spectacular, it was, it was Kingdom, Kingdom of the, of the Wizards. Wizards. But when, when Claude took it over, Claude changed the name of the forum, to sp the name of the building, right. to Spectacular Forum, right. moving it away from Kingdom of the Wizards, and also changed the tent to Calypso Spectacular. Okay, so you know how, like, these days, people just come to shows late so they can miss the opening acts just so they could see the foreign artists. You know when there's a foreign show and thing now? Well, back in the 80s, things were a little bit different. It was also the break for the Calypsonian out of the carnival season. Right. And I tell you why I say that, because it was right after carnival one year that he brought Cool and the Gang. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why not hide, why not showcase some of our own Calypsonian in the from same Calypso show? Spectacular in the show. Right. It was good for the Calypsonian, but it wasn't good for Cool and the Gang. They get show up. Because after Chuck does explainer, Chuck does explainer, Nelson and Super Blue. I think that was the foursome. People were happy at intermission. They said, <laughs> well, I get my money, so I could go home now. And they left? School and the gang must be performed by about half the audience. Wow. And that was the breakthrough for, for the Calypsonian. You, uh, Frank Martino, and him, mm -hmm. Rocky, were the, the three people that basically ran the tent. Oh, yeah. That for was, for was, a few years as well. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did that, how did that relationship work? The fell on us because Frank was house management, mm -hmm. Roy was the musical director at the time, and I had responsibility for the actual show itself. Right. Um, it was challenging, um, and I don't think people understood how challenging it was because the quality of material that you had to, to, to work with, I mean, it was really top quality material. There were people that you'd like to do two songs, but the program just couldn't fit it. We had a timing that we would work with. We right. wanted to start at 8.30, and we wanted to finish before 12, because we used to call 12 the Cinderella hour. Mm. Because when you walk through the tent, anywhere from about 20 to 12, you see people. Watching the, yeah. They tell our artists come for what time, and they come in whatever time, and they still get a bligh, if you know, they're special, or they like a boss, or whatever. How difficult was it to start at 8.30 every night? And the first five or six artists would know that, hey, you need to be punctual. We have no guarantees that Rockers is going to get two anchors tonight. True. So you be here present. You don't know when he's ready to go on stage, he might just start feeling ill. Yeah. And he can't go, so you had to go. So we'd have three people dressed and, and, and ready. I remember one night, Peter Ray Blood complaining at intermission. He said, no, no, I was outside in the line. It was 8.29 and you started the show. <laughs> I said, Peter, boy, my watch was saying it today. So, you know. Now, you may or may not know this, but Spectacular Promotions was responsible for busting some serious careers. Check the story out. 1986 was standout 
for people who like politics. <laughs> they remember the politics of that year. Okay. But for that year, it was one of the years that we wanted to experiment and we would take these ideas to, to Claude and sometimes he'd throw us out with it, you know. He'd say, look, you and Frank are here, but going to. But when we took the Marshall suggestion to him, and Claude said, all right, he will try it. That's all the time we have on Vintage for this episode, but stay tuned because next week we're getting deeper into the Calypso industry. It's WTF, where's the fashion? It's Fizzle, Captain Sapper, if you must. Cue the superhero music. <laughs> this season, we're looking for copy people. That's right, copy. And that's exactly what we did in Back to Blue. They're gonna learn today. <laughs> Yeah, see, what is this? Coco made me poor. As in Coco Chanel. As in Coco Chanel. I thought if people smelled me, they would understand. Wow. Looking for copy, is this your here? Yeah, man. You paid for it? Yeah. Do you have the receipt? I paid for it, it's mine. Short pants into the boots and the top with the chest exposed, you ready to party? I'm ready. I'm ready to party. Wonderful outfit, red, white, and black. Thank you very much, representing for Trinidad. All the time, don't drag the flag. Never. Is it joggers with the bamboo leaves? With the bamboo leaves. Right? Into and the skeletons. skeletons. And skeletons. Yes. So, wait, first time in joggers? First time in joggers. First time in joggers. Thank you so much. Supper. It's time to introduce you to the sapper side of life, sapper lifestyle people. And Cure LC's Fet Royale was royalty. The smoothness will surprise you. The Oaks, people, the Oaks. <laughs> Darling, um, how do you use the bathroom though? You have to come out of the suit like Dark Vader. First off, hair, makeup, and when you get to the actual show and you have to go to the bathroom, the whole thing comes off. If you're wearing a bodysuit, the whole thing comes off and then it goes back on. Not cool. Not cool at all. Dark Vader people, they don't want to be like Dark Vader in court in the party. Save that for the artist. I want to know, why are you so swanky? You need to behave yourself, Nisha B. I don't think you can handle the truth. Supper. I'm here with uh, Tunji Montana. Eh? I told you, okay? I told you we are in the QRC event, okay? And we are here and we are dressed for the, the event. Yes. And we are here, ta -da, we are here. Tell me about this designer. Yeah, this, this brother is amazing. He's based in Trinidad and Tobago, actually. His name is William.m Company. Brother, the brother, that's Jiggy. He understands the look and he understands Ola Tunji's um, vision for the, um, for the carnival season and moving forward. So he's the designer. Big up, William. You have to decide, people, beads versus bow tie. Take a last look, take a last look, take a last look. And now it's time for what not to do for Carnival in 2015. We sort out the artists. I'll tell you once, I'll tell you twice. Please. Don't take off your clothes on the people government stage again. Tripping does give me my powers, AI. Yes, no.